let's just begin by having you talk to me about uh, the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast, what it's about, and why is it of interest to Americans? Well, Chuck, uh, Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast is uh, interesting and important because it is an initiative that came out of the Israeli parliament. There are so many great initiatives, uh, you know, connecting the Jewish people and the Christians. But this is something that happened in 2016. I was uh, um, talking to a friend of mine, a Knesset member, Robert Tilatov, and he asked me for his help. He had just been appointed by the Speaker of the House to the position of the Christian Alice Caucus uh, chairman. And so he asked for my help. And I said, well, how can I help you? And he said, look, what we need is to bring about another alliance of the Friends of Israel. And I said, look, there are so many, there are great organizations, the Christian Embassy, you have the Bridges for Peace, Christian Friends for Israel. He said, no, we need something that is uh, out of the Knesset, something that is ours. And I said, look, then we need a prayer breakfast. And he said, you are out of your mind. I mean, this is the Jewish state. I mean, uh, you don't expect us to pray to Jesus, do you? And I said, look, we can find something that the Jews and Christians can actually agree about. We can pray for the peace of Jerusalem. He said, forget it, you are out of your mind. But then he went to talk to the president, then uh, Reuben Rivlin, and he convinced him. And Reuben Rivlin uh, said that he loved the idea. And two weeks later, when we met with Robert, he said, Rivlin loved the idea. He will host it. Um, he will take us to the president's residence. So are you going to help me now or not? And then I uh, figured out that, uh, well, we need to make it happen. And so it was really a miracle that in 2017, on the 50th anniversary of reunification of Jerusalem, we gathered at the president's residence. He, you know, with open arms, received us and said, I've been waiting for the Christians to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we didn't expect this to happen. But you know, when we went to the Knesset and then later we had the initial uh, meeting in the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, Michelle Bachmann, you know, she, the Congresswoman, she was our keynote speaker. But instead of speaking, guess what she did? She prayed for half an hour. <laughs> and and uh, something really uh, amazing happened because uh, not only was the first ever Jerusalem prayer breakfast a great success with 570 people from 58 nations, we started having invitations from all over the world. The president of Ghana, the first lady of Uganda, senator from Australia, senator from United States of America, and a member of parliament from Holland, member of parliament from Finland, from Sweden, invited us. So we've had now 20 Jerusalem prayer breakfasts outside of Israel. Well, we've had the annual ones, you know, every year we just had our eighth one. And so now we are coming to the New York City. So we're going to have a 21st Jerusalem prayer breakfast outside of Israel in New York. And you may say, why New York? What's happening in New York? Well, there's the United Nations General Assembly number 79. And guess what is going to happen there? They're going to be sending their ambassadors, the governments of the world will be sending their ambassadors to condemn Israel. They just, you know, had the International uh, uh, Court of Justice issue an advisory decision, but still a decision which says that it is illegal. The Jewish presence in Judea, Samaria, East Jerusalem is illegal. So they have criminalized Jewish presence in Israel, in the Israel's heartland. And they will try to adopt this at the UN General Assembly um, meetings, you know, in September now. And so what we are planning to do, what we are doing, we're calling people from all over the world to come and stand in the gap, stand in the gap for their nations. Because obviously you are not, you know, many of the people listening to us are not happy about their government's attitudes towards Israel. I mean, they've been condemning Israel in 2023 for 14 times in the UN while the rest of the world was condemned only seven times. So it looks like 
things are turned upside down and uh, this is the world we're living in and so that's why we are calling people to come and pray for the peace of jerusalem this time on september 15 16 in new york you know to counter that diplomatic tsunami that we will see at the united nations general assembly that's really good. Uh, what are some ways that you've seen God answer your prayers as you've been in this job? I know that we just saw this morning I, an absolute answer to prayer. We've been praying that God would thwart the plans of evil men, thwart the plans of Israel's enemies, cause their missiles and rockets to fall down on their own heads, cause them to have division and dissension among themselves so that they couldn't come to an agreement on when or how to attack. We've, we've been asking all those things since October 7th, and God has done it over and over and over again and did it in a big way just today as we saw uh, the Israelis able to take out 6,000 missiles and rockets inside Lebanon 15 minutes before they were due to fire them at Tel Aviv. So what an amazing answer to prayer that was. What are some ways that you've seen God answer prayers as you've been doing this? Well, uh, I could tell you story after story. When we went to Holland, for example, in 2019, we were in the hall where only the king gives the speech to the nation, Riddersal. And as the Jewish community and the Christian community were together and we prayed together and proclaimed the uh, word, you know, from the scriptures of Isaiah 42, where it says that uh, God's people is robbed and no one says give back. So what had happened in Holland, Chuck, was that the Dutch government had uh, made a decision to pay reparations for the Holocaust survivors. Now, look, the Dutch were very efficient in killing the Jews. 80% of the Jewish population were killed by the Dutch cooperating with the Nazis. And you know what they made the Jews to do? They had to pay their way to the death camp on the train and back. They paid their own tickets. And so the government decided to pay the reparations. But, you know, as the government saw, they make a decision, but then they start dragging their feet. They never paid the money. So the day we are gathered together in Riederzal, in the, in the hall where the king only speaks to the nation, the government makes a decision to release tens of millions of dollars, euros at that case, you know, in, in Holland, you know, to pay for these uh, Holocaust survivors and their descendants. And I mean, we can we can go for, from country to country. Italy, for example, we, uh, during the COVID, we were in uh, the library of Senate, invited by two senators, uh, Matteo Salvini and, uh, and uh, uh, it was uh, Simone Pilon. And so I still remember how Matteo Salvini comes to the rostrum and says, somebody wrote a speech for me. Um, I will not read it. I'll say what's on my heart. Uh, Jerusalem and the Jewish people are inseparable. And that's why it is the right thing to do for us in Italy to recognize Jerusalem um, and as the capital of Israel and to move the embassy. It's the right thing to do historically, theologically, and morally. And when my time comes, he said, I will move the embassy. I mean, look, look what happened a year later. I mean, it was Giorgio, Giorgio Meloni was there. There were, you know, Lucio Malan, different senators and members of parliament, they were all there, maybe 15 uh, parliament members. A year later, Chuck, they win the elections. He said, if I get the chance, and God gave him the chance. I mean, I could go on and on and on. I mean, every time we come together, Chuck, Jews and Christians come together, pray together, something miraculous happens, something that makes the history change happens since October 7. I mean, the Jewish people has been suffering the worst blow ever. I mean, the pain we carry in our hearts. Isn't it a better time for the Christians and Jews to come together and pray for the peace of Jerusalem so that we would see a breakthrough? 